Hey guys, um, another video for you tonight. This is the Panasonic Forehead VHS Hi-Fi machine. Uh, this is one of the later Panasonic machines. It's a PVV4522K. And this was manufactured, made in Indonesia. Wow. Um, this is a 2002 model, so this machine is 12 years old. And, uh, well, it's got a problem. It's actually got a couple problems, but one of them I'm not really too worried about. Sometimes it kicks the tape out when you load it, but here's the problem here. We try to play a tape on this thing, and we get a picture that looks like that. It will not track the tape. So we know what the problem with this is. This is a, a tape path alignment problem. That's why the scope's warmed up here. And we're going to uh, tear into this machine. Now this machine is probably one of the worst made machines I've ever seen in my life. I mean, uh, we just opened this thing up. There's only like a couple of screws that hold the back on. Look at this thing. I mean, this is just utter crap. You know, talk about the epitome of cheapness. I have never in my life seen anything quite as bad as this. This is this is the definitely the disposable VCR. Um, you know, it's just I thought some of the other Panasonic machines made over the years were cheap, but let's just take a look at this sucker and just I mean, I don't want to go there. Let's just take a look at this thing. You know, Panasonic wanted to make a sub one hundred dollar machine and. This was certainly it. This was probably a $69 machine or less. Everything's all one circuit board. A lot of, you know, maybe only one or two ICs. Power supply. Look at that. It's part of the main board. So there's no separate power supply in this thing. And it's really, really cheap. You know, the uh, race head. It's just, just, uh, ugh. I mean, yeah, it moves. The, the, the audio control head. I mean, it's just... Talk about a really ridiculously cheap chassis. Look at the, you know, even the tape transport, plastic wheels, you know. Um, I didn't want to get into that mechanism on this thing. This is one of these ones where you throw it away. Uh, but I take it one of these guides is going to be loose. They're plastic too. Look at this. The bases and everything are plastic. Uh, I have no idea where we're going to scope this thing. I see there's some test points down here and I see that there's some test points over here. One of these is going to be the RF and another one's going to be the um, the head switching. So let's find the test points so that we can try and do an alignment on this thing and see if we can uh, bring this machine back from the dead. Let's just get a look at how this thing threads. Get a loading gear here. Oh look at how loose that thing is. I mean this ah it's just horrible. Okay. So that's how the tape threads on this. It's a fully loaded. Look at this. The motor is on top. No more, um, no more having the motor mounted below the chassis. They actually mount uh, the stator unit is on top of the. Uh, it's on top of the head drum. The rotary transformer is in the bottom here. You can see where the video heads are connected to the rotary transformer. Uh, let's uh, get the scope on here and see what we can see what we can find. Okay. Uh, we got the scope probe here, and we're going to look for our test point. That looks as good a ground as any. Play. And we'll just start to probing to see. Oh, that looks like that might be RF right there. That looks like an RF test point. Where is the head switching? No, that's an RF test point. Okay, one of them is probably the audio hi-fi, and the other one is the video heads, I'm thinking. This being a hi-fi machine, we'd have two separate, uh, so what's on these test points here? Uh, not that one. Oh, that one's got a pulse on it. What's that one got on it? That one looks like it may be, okay, that one looks like a switching point. Yeah, that one's a switching point, you see that? So that's where we're going to hook our, our little probe to, which I really don't have a probe so I'm just using a jumper clipped onto the end of this RCA plug because one of my scope probes is gone tits up which one did I say I'm going to grab that 
test point right at the back here. Right next to the live power supply, right the place I really want to be connecting things into. Okay, that gives us a trigger. And we can clip on and we'll just crank the the gain up. Yeah, okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, that looks that looks terrible. Uh, you can see the waveform on the scope here. It, uh, yeah, it's bad, and that's why our picture is as bad as it is. So um, we'll just adjust these guides and see whether we can improve this at all. Okay, try this one. Okay, we're making some changes here. Picture's getting better. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's, yeah, that's, pro well, I, I'm not even using an alignment tape. I'm just using a, a tape that I actually recorded on the Sony machine. So, um, after I aligned it. So this is actually probably pretty close. That's the, I'm just bringing the level down a bit here on the leading edge and we'll, we'll take it back up. So you can see the leading edge here. And this is the entrance side guide. And we just try to bring that flat, which we have it. The exit side guide is relatively flat. So that's it. And it's playing. So I'm going to try my, my pre-recorded tape that I have here. We'll just load this one up and see how this one looks. And again the waveform is nice and flat and the picture is good. Go to fast forward here. Back to play. This was the uh, the promo tape for the old Steadicam Junior that uh, was shipped out with the Steadicam Junior to show kind of the invention of it. But um, yeah, we can see the waveform is flat. Looks great. Uh, it's about as good as it's going to get, I think. And yeah, that looks pretty good. That's about as good as I think we're going to get on uh, this machine here. The picture is perfect. So. Uh, just that's a little quick and uh, quick and dirty video on how to align a Panasonic, one of the newer machines. Well, I say newer, it's still 12 years old, so it's not a new machine, but this is utter garbage, this one. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, it's no wonder these things are selling for $69 or whatever the price of them was, because uh, they certainly, there's not much in them anymore. They are um, really, really 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 in are cheaply built so remember when video cameras used to be that big but, uh, yeah that that uh, unit that he's uh, playing with there that was the original steady cam and uh, yeah it actually worked quite well I used to have actually I still have one but uh, unfortunately the cameras have now gotten a lot lighter and it doesn't work very well with them they're too that was for a camera of a specific weight and if you don't have a camera that's that weight, well, it's not going to work very good. Anyway, there we go. There's the uh, there's the machine. It's fixed. We'll uh, eject the tape and put another machine back together. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a close-up shot to show where we connected the scope probes. So the trigger is right there. I don't know if we can get it any closer, but that's the test point for the trigger. And the RF from the head amplifier is right there. TP3002. And that's uh, about it.